So yesterday I posted a video about current sharing problems in large lithium iron phosphate battery banks. And we learned that this configuration right here, where the loads and chargers are connected at the very end of parallel battery banks can cause some problems. In that video, we showed that the battery closest to the charger will charge up faster and that the battery on the end will lag behind. And in that video, I recommended that people use a bus bar with equal length conductors instead. That's the easiest way to not screw things up and to have very good performance with your battery bank. But after posting that video, I wanted to run another experiment. I want to do the diagonal configuration that a lot of people are familiar with, where we connect the main positive conductor over here and then the main negative conductor over here. And then we'll compare the results to our first configuration and see how much it improves. So for this experiment, we're going to isolate this pack from the rest of the system. We're going to disconnect these other batteries behind me and we're going to run my entire system off of these five packs. Next, yesterday I charged these packs up to 100%. Then we'll put a large load on this battery pack. I'm going to charge my Tesla at the maximum rate at 240 volts. That way we can draw these batteries down as fast as possible and see if there's an actual imbalance. I think there will be, but I don't think it will be as bad as this configuration. This is the absolute worst configuration you can do for a battery bank. But like I said in the video, you can get by with it, but it's not ideal. I want to run this test because some people do not want to mess with a bus bar and they want to see how good that diagonal wiring configuration actually is. So anyways, that's enough talking. Let's wire up this battery and get started. So first we're going to disconnect these batteries. Next, we're going to remove this circuit breaker because it's too small for this test. And then we're going to add some larger conductors. So first I'm, whoops. We don't want to do that yet. So actually, I'm going to turn on one of these batteries momentarily so that we can still run these inverters and then I'll disconnect this. So let's open this up and then remove it. But I need glasses, so hold on. Now we have glasses and we can work with battery terminals. And for this test, we're going to use two aught gauge cables. Oh no, they don't fit. Dang it. Gosh, they need to make these things bigger, I think. This is where an SOK battery is better. You can add these large cables. Oh, this one fits. I can't tell you guys the name of this manufacturer yet, but this might be a really good server rack battery. So far it has been. Both of these arrive with shipping damage though, so they're finding another way to ship these for now. But yeah, these are larger terminals and the jack up here, even though they look like the same size. Also, the screw is larger. That is nice. That's way better than the EG4. This is a fat cable, <laughs> dang. Look how thick this cable is. I love 2 aught and 4 aught gauge, man. Lots of copper. So we can make our own 2 aught gauge cables, but let's see if these lugs actually fit. And they don't. Unfortunately, I do not have 0 gauge, but I have 2 gauge, so we're going to have to use this instead. Actually, max opacity of 2 gauge is only 94, so we're going to have to double this up. I do not like doing this, and no one should copy this, but we're going to do it for this test. Again, do not copy this configuration, not smart at all. So now the system is only connected to these batteries. But first, let's check the state of charge. Last night it was 100%, but it might have decreased from the idle consumption of these inverters. Okay, this one's 100%. This one's almost 100%. So let's charge up this pack all the way up. So now we have a charger connected and we'll wait till it hits 100%. Now the packs are at 100%, but I'm going to tighten down these terminals just to make sure. Very important. Every connection in your system matters. Never forget. See, that one was loose. Perfect. Now we can add a load. Now we're charging with 32 amps at 240 volts. And charging the car is pulling 160 amps at 53 volts. Now we're going to add an air conditioner to this load and a heat gun. Oh boy, we are pulling a lot of current now. 206 amps now. So this inverter is 4.4 kilowatts and this one is 5.4 kilowatts. And the current is rising. The air conditioner or heat pump just turned on. So now we're at 213 amps and it might rise a bit more. Now the fun part, we're going to see how much current each battery is supplying for these loads. Oh, these cables are getting warm already. Holy cow. So check this out. 40 amps, 35, 30.9, 43 amps, and 47. 
Also remember that these first two packs have a larger capacity, so they have less internal resistance and they'll feed more of the current in for this load. If all of these batteries were the exact same capacity, these two would cycle together and this one would lag behind. But they are doing a pretty good job, all things considered. What could actually help this is to have larger conductors right here and right here, so that the middle pack has less voltage drop, so then they cycle together. If you can't afford bus bars, that might be a really cool solution. There's other wiring configurations available online under Victron's Wiring Unlimited PDF. So I'll have that linked below. Now let's think about this for a second. 30 amps and 47 amps is a massive difference. If you're pulling this rate every single day, you're going to overwork these batteries and this battery will lag behind. So even though we have a diagonal configuration that helps and it's better than the last configuration, it is still not ideal. But these conductors seem, uh oh, this one's hot. That's not good. This one's hotter than the other ones, and this one's not that hot at all. That's not good. So to avoid all of these issues with current sharing, like I said, use bus bars with equal length conductors, and then connect your loads and chargers on opposite ends of those bus bars in a diagonal configuration. That way you will never have this problem. And the load is still 210 amps. So let's think about this for a second. If you divide 212 by 500, we're doing a 0.4 C rate test on this battery pack. Now let's say you pull a one C rate or 500 amps in this configuration, you will have problems. This one and this one will supply more current than this one and it will not be able to keep up with the loads. You would probably trigger over current protection on this one and then these would be triggered and then this one would be triggered and then it would shut down. Now let's reduce the current and see what happens. Now we're pulling 32 amps so let's see how much each battery is contributing to the load. First battery is 3.9, second battery is 4 amps, third battery is 4.2 amps. Oh look at this 7.5 and 8 amps. So things are changing now. Also these conductors are pretty hot so the resistance value has changed across the whole pack. Now personally in the past I've had this configuration for lead acid battery banks and it did not work for me. I would always have packs or cells that were lagging behind. So even though it's better than the original wiring configuration, it's not ideal. The best way to avoid this problem is to use large conductors and make your battery massive. Then each pack will only pull a small amount of current and there's a higher likelihood of them cycling together. But if you're pulling high C rates, you need to use some type of bus bar system. So I think you guys get the idea. I'm going to turn on the Tesla charger and we'll watch the state of charge decrease and see what happens. These two gauge wires are handling this current just fine, but you want to have a single conductor, especially with overcurrent protection devices. If something fails, you do not want all the current going through one conductor. That could cause some serious safety issues. It's interesting to see the difference between this pack and this pack. And I think it's because this one has a lower internal resistance because it's using different cells. This server rack manufacturer has very high quality cells, um, cattles and eaves. So yeah, that might be why there is a difference. Jack Appear has good cells as well and they also updated quite a few things on their BMS in the last uh, batch. But uh, yeah, I like these, these are really nice, but I think these are gonna cost more, but we'll cover that in a later video on these packs. We've been running 200 amps for about 30 minutes and now we're gonna check the state of charge. On the first battery, it's 70%. On the second, it's 71%. On the third, it's 75%. On the fourth, it's 68%. And on the fifth, it's 66%. Overall, they're not that far apart. Um, considering how much current was flowing out initially, a lot of them have actually settled down quite a bit. And I think it's because we're hitting that flat part of the discharge curve, so maybe they are contributing almost the same amount of current. So let's check the current now. The first one is 30 amps, second one is 29 amps, third one is 26 amps, fourth is 32, and the fifth is 33. Wow! <laughs> so now the difference is not as great. That's very interesting. I never thought about that with lithium iron phosphate. In the beginning of the test, there was a larger voltage differential, especially with these ones just being charged 
and these ones being charged yesterday. So these were at elevated voltage and they were contributing more of the current. But now they're nearly all the same. How cool is that? So that was a pretty fun experiment. I was not expecting those results. It's easier to understand when you see a real world example of this. I learned these the hard way with my first lead acid banks when some of the batteries were dying before others. And now with lithium iron phosphate, it's slightly different, but you still have to think about it when you design a system. So I hope you guys liked the video and please let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.